having a great intro is key to getting people excited about your video. My name is Tim, and today I want to show you how I made this electric logo reveal for the fictional brand Key Studios in a light motion. So far in this project, I've just got a rectangle shape with a gradient for a background and a noise layer, which will help reduce banding in the gradient when I go to export. Now, if you want to follow along with me, you can download a starter project just like this one or the finished project from links in the video description. Let's get started by adding the logo. For my animation, I actually saved the logo in two parts so that I could animate them separately. For this first part of the animation, I just want to work with the key symbol. First, I will animate the scale and rotation of the key over one second. Set a keyframe at the two second mark where the animation will end. Then back at one second, scale the layer up and add a little rotation. I will go to minus 25 degrees. Now that we have the layer moving, we can make the motion a little more natural by adding an easing curve. Tap on the easing icon and I will choose this preset, which causes the layer to stop gradually rather than stopping abruptly. I'll add the same preset to both the scale and rotation properties. Now I am ready to start adding some effects, but first I'm going to duplicate the layer. I know that I will want a second copy later to use as a mask, and then I will turn off the visibility until I'm ready to work with this layer. To keep the two copies straight, I will rename this bottom one Key Mask, and the top one Key Symbol. On the Key Symbol layer, I will tap Effects, Add Effect, and under Procedural, I will choose Fractal Ridges. I am going to adjust the scale of the effect to about 6. Then I want to animate the evolution so I'll place a keyframe at the beginning of the layer. Then jump to the end of the layer and set the evolution to about 1.5. I will also turn the intensity down to 0.8. The next effect I want to add is under color and light. I will choose hot color. I'm going to move the color toward green on the color wheel and the tint toward a yellow green. Next, I will tap over to blending and opacity and change the blend mode to screen. Okay, back in the effects menu, I want to swipe over to the matte mask key effects and choose matte choker. Tap on the invert switch to invert the effect and you will end up with a nice outline of the key shape. I'm going to animate the choke at two seconds. So I will add a keyframe here, then scrub down to two and a half seconds and set the choke to 100. And then I will set the feather to 0.75 for a softer edge. The last thing I need to do to this layer is add a wipe effect. Under matte mask key again, choose wipe. I want this layer to animate onto the screen from the bottom to the top, so I will change the angle to 90 degrees. At the 2 second mark on the timeline, I will set a keyframe for the start property, then scrub to 1 second and increase the start value until the layer is hidden. At 2 seconds, I want to bring in a white copy of the key over the top of this green one. Extend this layer to the end of the timeline. As the layer animates onto the screen, I want it to blend with the layer below, so I will choose the linear dodge blend mode scrub to two and a half seconds on the timeline, and then set a keyframe for opacity. Jump back to the beginning of the layer and drop the opacity to zero. In order to showcase the matte choker animation on the layer below a bit better, I will use an easing curve on these keyframes. Now the opacity comes in a bit slower than the matte choker at first, but catches back up at the 215 mark. Now I can add an effect to this layer. Under color and light, I will choose rays. Set the threshold to zero. And you can increase the length and intensity until you like the look. At 215, set a keyframe for intensity. Then at three seconds, turn it down to zero. At this point, we will preview the animation and see what we have so far. It is looking good. So now it is time to add the electrical storm behind the key. At the one second mark on the timeline, tap add and choose a rectangle shape. I will call the layer lightning. Long press and drag the layer to position it directly below the key mask layer in the timeline. Stretch the shape to the screen and scale it up beyond the edges of the frame. Then change the fill color to black and the blending to screen. Now go to effects add effect, and under procedural, choose lightning. At the two second mark, where the wipe animation finishes, we will align the start and end point of the lightning to the top and bottom of the key, beyond the edges of the frame. Select the point that you want to adjust, and then reposition it by dragging in the preview window. 
set a keyframe for the start property, then jump to the beginning of the layer. Move the start point below the bottom of the frame. Now we can animate the evolution property on the effect. Select a keyframe for evolution at the beginning of the layer, then jump to the end and increase the evolution to 1. Collapse the options for the lightning effect, then tap Add Effect, and under Distortion Warp, choose Turbulent Displays. Now we can turn on the visibility for the key mask layer. Long press and drag down on the tab at the left to select the key mask and lightning layers. Then choose the Exclude Mask Group. I will call this new group Electrical Storm. You'll have to change the blend mode to screen on this new group. Position the group below the key symbol. At the end of this layer, I will fade out the opacity over a half a second. So at 215, tap Blending and Opacity and set a keyframe. Then move to the end of the layer and set the opacity to zero. Next, I have to bring in the rest of the logo. To do that, I'm going to have more electrical energy reach out from the key and pull in the text. At 410, my logo will be in its final position. To get the positioning right for the key and the text, I'm going to bring in the original logo as a single PNG image to use as a guide. Let's hide the key symbol for a moment. Then from the Add menu, I will tap Image and Video and select the logo. I will adjust the position and scale of the layer until I am happy with the composition. To make this guide layer easy to distinguish from the layers that are animating, I will change the color. Go to Effects and under Color and Light, choose Solid Color. Position this layer below the key symbol. Now we can work on the animation for the key. Tap the eye to make it visible again. Set a keyframe at 4 seconds for the position and the scale. Then at 410, I will adjust these properties to align the key with the guide layer. Next I will bring in the logo text at 4 seconds. Again I want to align the image to the guide layer at 410. Set a keyframe for the position and scale properties. Then at 4 seconds, increase the scale and move the text off the right side of the frame. With the animation set for these two layers, we can delete the guide layer. And we can preview that animation. Now let's make the animation look a little more natural. Starting with the key, I will add an easing curve to the position and scale keyframes. Then under Effects, go to the Blur menu and add a Motion Blur. Let's repeat those steps on the text layer. Add the easing curve. And then the Motion Blur. With the animation set, we can work on the electrical energy. This will be really similar to the lightning layer we created before. Start with a new rectangle shape at 3 seconds. Label it Energy. And position it below the logo layers. Change the fill color to black. Tap Move and Transform. And then tap on the position icon again so you can move the pivot point. Slide the pivot point to the left edge of the shape. Position the left edge of the rectangle along the midpoint of the key symbol. Now I'm going to increase the scale of the layer until it fills the frame vertically. When the key and text animate between 4 and 410, I will also animate the scale and position of this rectangle layer. I want the rectangle to just fill the gap between the key and the text. Remember to add the easing curve to the animation so that the pacing matches the logo layers. In the Blending and Opacity menu, change the Blend Mode to Screen. Then go to Effects, Add Effect, and select the Lightning Effect. Adjust the Start and End positions to make it look like the Lightning is connecting the key to the text. I will animate the evolution throughout the duration of this layer.
I'm also going to add a touch more intensity and change the seed. Then I can add the turbulent displace effect on top of that. With this effect, I'm going to simulate a bit of physics between the two logo parts by adding some parallax. Set a keyframe at the beginning of the layer, then move to the end and set the X value to minus 100. Next, I will add a wipe effect. At the beginning of the layer, move the end property to zero and add a keyframe. Then at the four second mark, increase this to 100. If you scrub midway through that wipe, you can see the edge has a hard cutoff. I will increase the feather to 20 to soften that edge. The last effect I want to add to this layer is a motion blur to match the other logo layers. Finally, I will trim the end of this logo layer at 410, where all the animation ends. Alright, we're nearly done, just a couple of finishing touches left. First, I'm going to add a little bit of shake to the key symbol. Under Move Transform, select Auto Shake. At 3 and 4 seconds, set the magnitude to 0, and add a keyframe. Midway between those keyframes at 315, crank up the magnitude to 35. We will also set the speed to 5. Next, I want to add a flash of light when the key comes onto the screen. In order to brighten all of the layers together, I'm going to use the copy background effect. I will quickly make another rectangle, call it flash, stretch to screen, scale it up, and trim to one second. Then go to Effects, Add Effect, swipe all the way over to the other column, and choose Copy Background. Now any effects applied to this layer will appear to affect all of the layers below. Then I will add the Exposure Gamma effect. Set a keyframe for exposure at the beginning and end of the layer. Then in the middle at 215, increase the exposure to 0.6. And that's it! Now you can export your animated logo. Let's take a look at the final animation one more time. Thanks for watching. If you make your own version of this, post a video link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video.